Just to walk through this process, um, we've been given the function y equals 6 minus 2x squared, x minus x squared, and y equals x plus 6, and we're rotating around the x-axis. If you do just a quick sketch of the graph, you'll see your x plus 6 looks like this, and your 6 minus 2x minus x squared looks something like that. So you are going to have a gap because the um, y-intercept for the x plus 6 is all the way up here at 6, and we're revolving around the x-axis. So there's a gap which means we have to account for <clears throat> the first function minus the second function and then revolve that. So if you set them equal to each other, you'll see that they intersect at 0 and at negative 3, which is where we get our boundaries. If you place a point in between negative 3 and 0 in either of these, <clears throat> you will see that the first function here is going to be larger than the second function. So we're going to list the first function and square it subtract the second function squared. And when you do that, you are going to have to distribute this first function all the way through, foil this second function. You'll get this long number of terms here, so just simplify by combining like terms, which you will get the negative 36x line here, and all I did from here to here was put it in standard form. At this point, once you have foiled out your fraction, your uh, functions, combined your like terms, you're ready to do the antiderivative. And so we're going to take the antiderivative then of this line right here, x to the fourth, 4x cubed, negative 9x squared, and negative 36x. So taking that antiderivative, you will get this 1 fifth x to the fifth plus x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus 18x squared. And we are taking that from negative 3 to 0. So plugging in a 0 gives you a 0. Plugging in a negative 3 gives you this right here. So you end up with positive 243 over 5. So for this one, we are going to look at <clears throat> revolving around the line y equals 3. So it's the same setup, the same functions, the same places where they intersect. <clears throat> um, but now we are going to consider the fact that we have to take from the parabola to the line as our first function, and from the line to the line, the green line to the blue line here, the x plus 6 and the y equals 3. And so we're going to set up the x plus 6 minus 3. That's going to be our inner function. And the 6 minus 2x minus x squared minus 3, which will be our outer function. And so if we simplify the outer function, we're going to get this squared minus the inner function squared. So the only difference between this and the one we just did is the fact that we have to consider this y equals 3, which is why we have the minus 3 here and the minus 3 here. The setup is the same. You FOIL this. You foil that to get this long, simplify that to get this, and then you're going to take your antiderivative at this point. Antiderivative of this line here is the 1 fifth line, and then again you're going to plug in your 0 and your negative 3, and you will get the 108 pi over 5. All right, so we can just do 1. 1 is fine. We have x equals negative 6, I mean negative square root of 6 minus y, and x equals the positive square root of 6 minus y, and y equals 2. We're revolving around the axis y equals 2. All right. If I'm revolving around y equals 2, that's a horizontal, which means it is parallel to my x-axis, which means I need it in terms of x. Right now it's in terms of y. So I need to write these in terms of x. I would do that by squaring both sides. And then moving my x over to one side and my y over to the other. So it ends up being y equals 6 minus x squared for both of those. If I square both sides, <clears throat> then I get x squared equals 6 minus y. Move the y over, move the x squared over. You get y equals 6 minus x squared. So I basically have y equals 6 minus x squared and y equals 2, and I'm revolving around y equals 2. So now I start the process of where do they intersect, um, 
which one's higher, which one's lower, um, so that I know, which I actually shouldn't already know this, but that's okay. So I'm going to say 6 minus x squared equals 2. So that means x squared equals 4. So x is going to be um, negative 2 or positive 2. Between negative 2 and positive 2, 6 minus x squared is higher. Okay? So I am going to take, but there is no gap because the, the boundary is the same as what I am revolving around. Those are the same. The other function and what I'm revolving around is, is the same. And so if you were to think about this in terms of graphing, which, you, again, you don't have to graph them, but this is why knowing a schematic or a sketch of what the graph should look like is so important. That's why we did that in pre-calculus and why you had to know all those different graphs. Y equals 2 is just a linear graph, right? It's just at, at 2. You have this little guy here. 6 minus x squared is a, is a parabola pointing down, which crosses the x-axis at 6. So it's going to look something like this. And I'm basically um, taking this little guy here and revolving it around that line. No gap whatsoever. <clears throat> but it is important that I put both of those. So basically, I'm putting that subtraction within the squaring. That is my radius. Mm -hmm. The difference from parabola to line is my radius of revolution. Okay? If I had had a gap, like say I, they had introduced a different function in there, then I would have had a radius that was a function minus the line. That's my first radius. And then a different function minus the line would have been my second radius that I was subtracting out. But I don't have that. This is a disk. <clears throat> so I'm going to go from negative 2 to positive 2. And I'm going to say it's the parabola minus the line squared. All right. So I end up with from negative 2 to positive 2, of 4 minus x squared squared. And this is much easier than the ones that we did for homework, for sure. So if I take that antiderivative, uh, they gave it to me as that line. So I have to take the parabola minus the line to get the distance between these two. All right, so um, if I FOIL this, I get 16, 16 minus 8x squared plus x to the fourth, and I'm going to take that antiderivative. So I would have uh, 16x minus 8 thirds x cubed plus 1 fifth x to the fifth from negative 2 to 2. And then you're just going to plug those in. So plugging in a positive 2, 32 minus 64 thirds plus 32 fifths. And then minus negative 32 plus 64 thirds minus 32 fifths. They actually all double, is what happens, I think. You're going to get a massively big to the 15th, right? 5, 12, 5. So 
So for this one, we have two functions. We're revolving around y equals zero, and y equals zero is not one of my boundaries. It's not like one of my functions is y equals zero. Um, so I need all of these in terms of y. So if I get the first one in terms of y, I'll square both sides and add the one. So y equals x squared plus one. If I get the second one in terms of y, I'll multiply by two and then add one. So I would get y equals two x plus one. Those would be my two functions. Um, they are revolving around y equals zero, which is my x-axis. So if I were to think about this, um, first I can figure out, I guess, where they cross each other. So I would say x squared plus one equals two x plus one. Get everything to one side. You get x squared minus 2x equals 0, so x is going to be 0 and 2. And so from 0 to 2 is where I'm going to integrate this one. You can think of it like this. Um, first of all, which one's higher and lower? If I plug in like a 1, I'm going to get 2 here and I'm going to get 3 here. So my 2x plus 1 is higher. If I were going to look at this like any rotation, you're basically saying 2x plus 1 minus what I'm revolving around. That's my outside radius, because that's the higher one. That's further away from the 0. But because it's 0, you don't even have to include it. So you can just say my first radius is going to be the 2x plus 1 squared. And I'm going to subtract from that my inner radius. I'm revolving around 0. This is closer to zero. And if I did, if I had a one or something there, you would do like this, 2x minus what I'm rotating around. But it's zero, so it doesn't affect it. So I end up with x squared plus one squared dx. And then I'm just gonna foil those. So I get four x squared plus four x plus one minus x to the fourth minus two x squared minus one. And then, of course, I have to get those, um, simplify them as much as possible. So I get negative x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 4x. And that's what I'm <clears throat> going to take my antiderivative of. So I end up with negative 1 fifth x to the fifth minus 2 thirds x cubed plus 2x squared from zero to two, and then just plug it in. And of course that's minus zero. Um, 15 is my common denominator. This is plus. And this is plus, and that's plus, because that was a positive 4 and a negative 2. Okay. That equals 104 pi. Don't forget your pi, by the way. It kind of hangs out there over 15.